Imagine you are building a house and you wanted to stand the test of time. You don't want to tear it down every time the kitchen style changes or the plumbing needs an upgrade. Clean architecture is the blueprint for that kind of a house. Except here, we are building software. Clean architecture is a way of organizing your code to make it robust, scalable and future-proof. Whether you are building an e-commerce app or a ride-sharing platform like Uber, clean architecture ensures that your code logic stands strong no matter how much the outside world changes. In this video, we'll explore how clean architecture works by building simple Uber-like ride-sharing service. We'll break down the core concept layer by layer and show you real-world Java code examples that demonstrates how to structure your app for maximum flexibility and maintainability. By the end of this walkthrough, you'll understand how to design powerful, long-lasting software systems using clean architecture principles. So, let's dive in. Think of clean architecture as a blueprint for software design. It's built on one core principle. Dependencies should always point inward. This means the innermost layer of your system, the core business rules are independent of frameworks, databases, UI, or even external APIs. It's all about isolating what your system does from how it interacts with outside world. Let's break this down with real life example. Imagine you're building a ride sharing app like Uber. The core business rules might include concepts like ride, driver, and passengers. These rules don't care whether the system uses MySQL, MongoDB, or even Excel sheets to store data. That is the essence of clean architecture. And here is how clean architecture is typically structured. Entities form the foundation of your system application. They hold the core business logic and rules completely independent of frameworks or external systems. For example, in a ride-sharing app, a ride entity knows about passengers, drivers, and how to calculate fares. But it doesn't care where the data comes from or how it is stored. Use cases define what actions your system can perform. They orchestrate entities to solve specific business problems. For instance, request ride use case matches a passenger with an available driver and initiates a ride. Interface adapters act as translators between your core logic and the outside world, like APIs, databases, or the user interface. Imagine a REST controller that takes an incoming HTTP request, calls the appropriate use case, and formats the response back to the client. Frameworks and drivers sit on the outermost layer. This is where tools like Spring Boot, Hibernate, or MySQL live. For example, a database adapter can save write details using MySQL while keeping the code logic untouched. By organizing code this way, your application stays clean, flexible, and ready to adapt, whether you are adding features, swapping databases, or scaling to millions of users. All right, so let's understand everything with code examples in Java. This is the write class, our core entity. It defines what a write means in the system. We store critical details like ride ID, passenger ID, and pickup drop-off locations. The status tracks the ride's current state from requested to completed. When we create a new ride, we initialize the pickup and drop-off details while setting the initial status to requested. This keeps the business rule for starting a ride centralized. And when a driver is assigned, the ride status changes to accepted. Similarly, when the trip ends, the complete ride updates status to completed, which keeps our ride lifecycle crystal clear. So let's check out a couple of use cases. Use cases define actions the system can perform. These contain the business logic. Here is our first use case, request ride use case. It's responsible for creating new ride request. Notice how it depends only on the ride repository interface, making it independent of how data is stored. So when a passenger requests a ride, the method generates a unique ride ID. It creates a new ride object and saves it using the repository. Finally, it returns the newly created ride ID. Driver assignment is another key use case. This class depends on both the ride repository and the driver repository, allowing us to check if a driver is available before assigning them to the ride. And when a driver is assigned, we first retrieve the ride by its ID. If the driver is available, we assign them to the ride and update the repository. And if anything fails, the assignment is rejected. The repositories are interfaces that define how we interact with the data layer. Notice there is no mention of databases or frameworks here. This keeps the app flexible, so we can switch databases later without rewriting the code logic. Now comes the controller. This is where we expose write-related APIs. It connects HTTP requests to use cases, ensuring clean separation between business logic and web APIs. So when a POST request hits the request endpoint, the controller triggers the request ride use case and responds with a unique ride ID. 
making this API action driven and straightforward. And when assigning a driver, the controller checks if the assignment was successful. If it was, it returns a success message. Otherwise, it sends a bad request response. Let's talk about frameworks and drivers. These are the external systems. We'll use an in-memory repository for our simplicity. Our in-memory write repository stores writes using a simple hash map. This keeps things light while allowing us to switch to a real database like MongoDB or PostgreSQL when needed. Application setup is where we tie everything together. We define the main class with add Spring Boot application to let Spring Boot handle the app lifecycle. We create AdBean methods to wire repositories, use cases, and controllers. For instance, write repository returns an in-memory storage implementation, while request write use case connects the repository to the use case. Finally, we link everything together. When an HTTP request comes in, the controller triggers the write use case, which interacts with the repository and returns a response. The setup keeps the app well organized and makes switching frameworks or databases seamless. And this is how Clean Architecture powers a ride-sharing app like Uber. We have built a system where core business logic is completely independent of frameworks. We can change the database, swap APIs, or even migrate frameworks without touching the heart of the app. That is the power of Clean Architecture. Clean Architecture ensures that even if everything outside changes, the framework, the database, the front-end, the core business logic stays intact. This makes your ride-sharing app future-proof, maintainable, and scalable. And clean architecture isn't just about organizing code. It's about creating software that build to last. So next time you face with a messy code base, remember, build the core first and let the frameworks follow.